Let's do another example here of partial fractions. So evaluate x, the integral of x squared minus 2 over x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. So we'll note here that even though this is a little bit more complicated than our previous case, it still falls into this nicest case. The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 2. And the, and the degree of the denominator is x times 2x times x. That gives us x cubed. So the degree is 3. And, and the denominator it has, is factored into linear factors with no repeats. So here we see x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. That's all factored, no repeats. So the same method that we used in the previous problem is going to work. There's just our three factors for us to deal with, not just two. So we are guaranteed by the method of partial fractions that there are constants, now A, B, and C, three constants now, such that this is equal to A over the, that first factor, plus B over that second factor, plus C over that third factor. And once again, our goal is we need to figure out what are, what are A, B, and C. And same thing as before, we start off by cross multiplying by x minus 1 and 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. And so what do we end up with? This x minus 1 will cancel out that x minus 1 and we'll get 2x plus 3 times x plus 1 times a. And then this times this, the 2x plus 3's will cancel and we'll end up with x minus 1 times x plus 1 times b, and then this times this, the x plus 1's will cancel. So x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 times c. Okay, so once again, same thing as before, this equation here has to be true for all values of x. We're allowed to plug in any values of x that we want to, um, and then this will allow us to figure out what are A, what and B, and C. Okay, so same thing as before. I, I think the easiest way to attack this is by substituting in appropriate values of x. And so, uh, good choice here. Let's see, we plug in x is equal to 1. That will get rid of those two terms. So, we get 1 squared minus... 2 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 1 times a plus 0b plus 0c. And so this ends up as minus 1 is equal to 10 times a, so a is equal to minus 1 tenth. A little comment here, quite often when you're working with partial fractions, you do end up with fractional coefficients, so don't be scared that we're getting fractional coefficients here. Okay, uh, so that took care of, of A. Uh, in order to find what B is, we want to get that 2x plus 3 term is equal to 0. How do we make two x, 2x two x plus 3 equal to 0? We use x is equal to minus 3 halves. And so if we plug in x is minus 3 halves, so minus 3 halves squared minus 2 is equal to 0 times a plus minus 3 halves minus 1 times minus 3 halves plus 1 times b plus 0 times c. So the left here is plus 1 quarter, and then this ends up as, let's see here, minus 5 halves times minus 1 half. Um, so that is going to be 5 fourths times b, and this gives us b is one-fifth. Okay, so two down, one to go. 
our final choice before I go to the new slide. Let's see here. If we set x is equal to minus 1, we'll get rid of the a and the b terms and I'll leave it only with the c terms. So that is going to be. So minus 1 squared is plus 1. Minus 2 is equal to 0a plus 0b plus minus 1 minus 1 times minus 2 plus 3c. So minus 1 is equal to uh, minus 2c. And so c is equal to 1 half. So c is equal to 1 half, b is equal to 1 fifth, a is equal to minus 1 tenth. And so putting all of this together, we conclude that the integral of x squared minus 2 over x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to the integral of, so what was a minus 1 tenth over x minus 1 plus the integral of what was b, 1 fifth, and that's going over 2x plus 3. And then plus c is 1 half, we see that up there, and that has to go over x plus 1. And now each one of these integrals is very easy for us to do. So minus 1 tenth times natural log of, that was the value, x minus 1, plus 1 fifth times 1 half. Uh, you do, we really should be using substitution here. u is equal to 2x plus 3. Um, you can check for yourself that this is what you end up with. Plus 1 half times natural log of absolute value of x plus 1. And don't forget your final plus c where let's make that a little bit of a fancy C to make sure that it's that we understand it's different from the preceding C. Okay, so that's how you do partial fractions. Again, if it's, you know, now we can basically see this method is going to work whenever our degree of the, of the, of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, and we can factor out, factor the denominator out into linear factors with no repeats. So we did it with two, we did it with three, we could do it for four or five. I mean, that would be pretty tedious and boring, but there's nothing, there's nothing difficult, there's nothing stopping us from being able to do that.